This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and foot size. You know, the other day I saw a bear, uh-huh. a great big bear that had no hair. You and know, at that point, I feel like the dispensary should be paying them to set up outside there. And then there was that Oprah episode about the rainbow parties. Remember that? <sighs> the soaker isn't committing the sin and the soaky isn't committing the sin. Why are there <laughs> so many songs about rainbow? IFAF, Idaho Falls Infotainment Talk Show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on this episode, Shaq's shoe size, say that five times fast. Google AI is having an issue and I'm having an issue with Microsoft Copilot. A <laughs> uh, brand new podcast about recovery that we're looking forward to from a friend of ours. Also, the Snake River Animals Shelter has a couple of cool things uh, one they've already done, one they're going to do that you can get in on. We'll tell you about those two. You're a power bottom at rock bottom. The group chat is already lit tonight, Carly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been seeing the notifications. Uh, I know I don't really check it much, but... You are very present in person. I try to be. That and also, I don't know, I just don't think to look at my phone that much. Yeah. You know, which almost kind of sucks, because like nowadays where everyone's always on their phone... I'm the one who's dis- who's disconnected. Yeah, right. I, I, there are people who bemoan, oh, we're just not connected anymore, and it's because of our phones. Mm-hmm. I'm super connected because of my phone. Right, right. Yeah. And I'm sort of... You are the most present in person, mm-hmm. and I will do a phone check from time to time, just compulsively. Oh, sure. Um, but I'll either get back to you in three seconds or three hours. There is no in-between. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, uh, first follow-up, let's talk about why I'm dressed as if this is the wide, wide world of sports. <laughs> I like it. I think it looks great. This is it. This is the Greg Hale uh, Idaho Falls A's T. Mm-hmm. The Chuckers were the Idaho Falls A's from 82 to 84. Mm-hmm. Well, and not just the A's, the swinging A's. The swinging A's. I mean, good thing they didn't go with the swinging D's. <laughs> <laughs> they probably did have the swinging D's. I mean... I've you, seen their booties. Come you, on. You have admired them for their cake. I believe that's yeah. in one of our older episodes. <laughs> anyway, Greg Hale, thank you so much. This is fantastic. And I, I did. Carly went a little crazy at Christmas and got me this sport coat that just happens to match this T-shirt perfectly. It looks pretty good together, honestly. <laughs> and you know, it reminds me a lot of Bonneville High School. Yeah. Uh, yellow and green. Yeah. Remember oh, when yeah. Greg says, hey, this made us Eskimo brothers. Right. I said, did you mean? And he said, yeah. I, I, he was joking. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And then he sent me a clip of the league. And did I forget that John Lajoie was in that? And maybe do I want to watch that now, even though it has to do with sports? I'm so conflicted. Ooh, I mean, you know what? I would give up an evening for that. John Lajoie was, uh, if you don't remember, this was, I don't want to say it was pre-YouTube. It was right when YouTube came out. Right. He was a white guy <clears throat> parodying the fact that he was white. And also parodying rap songs. Oh, funny. I believe Okay, his, so like Weird Al. Kinda. <laughs> okay. Kinda. I believe his most famous video was a video entitled Show Me Your Genitals. <laughs> and, <laughs> so as conservative as pop music is today, mm-hmm. remember there was a hit single in the late 90s by Meredith Brooks called Bitch. Oh, I loved that song. And it was all over the radio. Yeah. I played it personally several times. Wait, you really were able to get away with saying bitch on the radio? Yeah. How? It just That's the thing. Huh. The pendulum swings between liberal and conservatism. Sure, I guess. But... I, th- I think the thing hmm. that made us more conservative in this country was Janet Jackson Nipplegate at the Super Bowl. Sure. And yeah. 9-11. <clears throat> Yeah, so I now in 2024, true. I remember thinking in the late 90s, well, if we're saying bitch on the radio now... Right. What's pop music going to be like in 20 years? Yeah. Well, here we are 25 years later, Mm -hmm. and we're editing out the line in Beyonce's Texas Hold'em where she says, don't be a bitch, come take it to the floor now. (laughs) Right, right. Which I think is a great line. Well, and even when I was like doing my show for The Wolf the other day, uh, I asked you if I could say fart on the radio, and you said, "Mm, maybe go with toot. Yeah. You know? Right. You'll sometimes call me and go, is this okay? Yeah. But the point I'm getting at is, remember kids, in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, like there, I don't remember the exact song, but there was a song by Lil' Kim Mm -hmm. that basically was instructions on how to have sex with her. Right, right. Or anyone in general. 
And that is also basically WAP, just saying. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Well, and even uh, Lil' Kim in that Moulin Rouge song, uh, Voulez-vous coucher? That one? Right, Avec moi, yeah. Ce soir, which is which is kind of, it's a throwback to the 70s. Right, you know, and it's right. like her, Maya, Christina Aguilera, and Pink, which also, I love Pink so much. If we ever have a chance to go to a Pink concert, let's oh, yeah. go. Great, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, um, but yeah, even that song that's relatively mild still is basically saying, will you go to bed with me tonight? Right. And okay, so so now we're back to John Lejoie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. So even though that sounds like a dirty, dirty song, mm-hmm. that's kind of how it was back then. Right. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, now back to this shirt. Yes. <laughs> and Greg Hale and I being back Eskimo brothers, I said, hang on, wait a minute. It could be said, Greg, that you and I have slept with the same shirt. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I sometimes like to wear a shirt uh, when I go to bed in the winter to mm-hmm. keep my shoulders warm. That makes sense. That's nice. Anyway, yeah. very happy to rock this shirt, Greg. There's only two of these in the world. Unless you want to make a third, I know a guy. He needs Aww. a double XL. I'll hit you up. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> you guys can be like your own little exclusive club. Yeah. Now, here's a question. Is the word Eskimo offensive? It is technically a slur. Okay. Yeah. I got to catch up then. Yeah. Um, I Because I looked into it. Apparently, you have to be a little more specific and say Inuit or you pick people of mm-hmm. Eastern Siberia and Alaska. But um, is it racist to say I couldn't tell you the difference between an Inuit and an, a and a you pick? No, I don't think it's racist. I think it's just ignorant. Okay, it's <laughs> totally. I need to get into that culture. Well, because well, be, I know that like yeah. the term Latino, <clears throat> Latina, or now Latinx, mm-hmm. like encompasses not just people from. Mexico. Latin America. Yeah. But also, you know, sometimes Puerto Rico and, and other mm-hmm. territories. And, yeah. and I don't think Eskimo is such a bad word. You have to say the E word. No. You no, know, it's, it's, it's not, not like that. Like that. Yeah. But, um, okay. Are expressions featuring outdated racial descriptions mm-hmm. also offensive? Like Eskimo kisses? Oh, I forgot about Eskimo kisses. What if I wanted to sit Indian style? Okay, that's just crisscross applesauce. If you're in kindergarten. Okay, and when do you sit crisscross <laughs> applesauce outside of kindergarten? I would call it cross-legged. Oh, sure, but I'm just saying. Okay. You know, like, <laughs> realistically, you become right, an adult right. and you don't, no- <laughs> sit, you don't sit that way anymore. You don't go into a work meeting. Right. All right, everybody, let's sit crisscross applesauce. Yeah, no. You do that in yoga, though. Isn't that a yoga position? It is, but, they, call, but they call it something. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's fine. So I feel like Eskimo as a word is kind of like Indian. Like, it's kind of offensive, and it's definitely not the right word. I don't think anyone would, like, you know, crucify you over it. But realistically, you look like a dumbass who doesn't know what they're talking about. Right. I feel that way about people, and I think they're mostly 50 plus now. Right. Everybody else has gotten the memo. I, and look... As an old person myself, I'm st- I am still learning, still trying every day. That's why we're two whiteies. We're, right. Can I use my white privilege and call <laughs> us crackers? We're a couple of crackers talking about how to refer to other races, indigenous peoples, yeah, ethnicities, mm-hmm. nationalities, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but like uh, mine is um, old people who haven't learned the difference. Well, like rugs are Oriental. People are Asian. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's Mm -hmm. a big one in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I hear someone say Oriental when referring to a person, I'm like, okay, dude. Even, do you know that magazine Oriental Trading? Yes. Oriental Trading Company. Yeah. That one, even I was kind of like. They got a bunch of cheap Asian toys. Yeah. Right. But anyway. Well, they're objects. So they could be Oriental objects. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they're all like, a lot of it's made in China. Yeah. So I get it, but it's also like. Mm, come on. S- speaking of which, speaking of China for just a minute, mm-hmm. um, and the Simpsons have already predicted World War China, I think by 2050. Ugh. But uh, the Simpsons have predicted a lot of stuff. They have. Um, but, you know, this, uh, and I was shocked to learn it's not Timu, it's Temu <laughs> in the Super Bowl ads. Yeah. And then Sheen, Shine, Shane. Okay, here's the What's dumb the thing, though. Timu has actually called itself Timu on different ads. They don't get their branding right. Uh, okay. They've gone with Timu and Temu. All right. Yeah. I, I just, 
we're buying cheap Chinese crap these days. Mm -hmm. And do you remember a few episodes ago where I was boobing about how all I wanted was a comb? Oh, yeah. And I was trying to think of a reputable brand of comb, and the only one I could think of was Ace. Oh, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. So searching for something as simple as a comb on Amazon, I would get these jumbles of letters and sometimes even numbers that didn't make any phonetical sense. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the hell's happening here? Oh, yeah. Amazon is now this global market, Mm -hmm. and it's being flooded with cheap Chinese crap. Well, cheap stuff from overseas, period. Because it's not always Chinese. Sometimes it's Taiwanese or Indian or... Something like that. This desk yeah. that we sit at. I had to buy mm-hmm. it twice. Right. Because. Yeah, because it broke the first time within like a month. I made the mistake of dragging it across the carpet <laughs> and one of the legs went. Yank. Yeah. So I bought it again. You might call that throwing good money after bad. But instead of buying another desk that was sturdier, I just bought the same desk and used parts from the old desk to reinforce this desk. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm writing it off twice, IRS. <laughs> there you go. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, I'm just kind of I'm just kind of fed up with that stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. And 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 I'm not being um nationalistic or whatever. Um I don't care if it's a foreign country mm-hmm. as long as it's it's a reliable brand. Right. Yeah. That's going to last. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so long as it like it has less to do with its point of origin and much yeah. more to do with its durability. Right. And and how in this global marketplace are companies going to build a reputation of quality? Mm-hmm. And some people don't care. That's Exactly. That's the thing. They're not going to. They want a dress that lasts a month. Yeah. Do you remember when the gay guy tried to pick me up at Sting? <gasps> yes. And he was like, I'm just checking. Is that jacket Burberry? And, right. I, and I said, oh, no, it's H&M. And he said, oh, I get it, honey. Wear it once and throw it out, right? Right. And I'm like, oh, here I am wearing it two winters later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. Like, fast fashion, so many things have gotten so disposable. And, I mean, if we want to get real dark, like, that's why slavery still exists in this world, which is horrifying. Including mm, cell phones labor. are why slavery exists. I mean, that's one reason, but there's a lot. Cobalt mining? Yeah, it's super messed up. You like, think you're green by getting a... Uh, a uh, hybrid? Yeah. Or an electric vehicle? Oh, Yikes. no. Yikes. Yeah. Ew. It sucks. There's there's no ethical <laughs> consumption anymore. Like, it's no, so right. hard we're all, to do. We're all complicit. It's why we're all going to the bad place. At least in America, we don't have factories <laughs> that... Uh, thank you, Kristen Bell. Thanks. We don't have factories with, you know, nets outside for people that try to jump from a window or a roof yet. <gasps> I think we do somewhere. I'm sure Amazon will have a new distribution center with those. Right. Jeez, that's so scary how they monitor their employees and bathroom <sighs> breaks and peeing in water bottles because they can't take a break. It's just wild. Yeah. Wild. It's awful. I'm a capitalist through and through, except when it comes to that kind of shit, that late I, stage yeah. capitalism. You know, everything's mm-hmm. a subscription now. Even apps oh. that I have purchased mm-hmm. now have nag screens on them. Saying, hey, subscribe for this oh, I service I don't that. want or need. No, my car has a subscription for it. Like, Ridiculous. I can't use my remote start unless I buy a subscription. A subscription for um, uh, Subaru Starlink, which yeah. makes me so mad. I, I have to believe in a free market system mm-hmm. that this is going to work itself out. I mean, dude, we're basically going back to cable. It's going to be right. It's going to be a revolutionary advertisement when somebody comes on and says, you get what you pay for. Right. And, you know, there's no subscriptions required. Yeah. But hey, at least for a short time, we're adding value to our shareholders. Yeah. It's so stupid. I mean, honestly, that's the thing. You need to make it affordable and accessible enough that people don't feel the need to steal it. Because, re- I mean, realistically now, piracy is so easy. What's the expression I'm hearing? If purchasing isn't ownership, then piracy isn't theft. That a I mean, lot they of, got a point, though. A lot of people were saying that when some major game company was saying, hey, everybody's got to get used to the idea that you're not going to own the game anymore. Right. It's just going to be on a subscription. But But I've already done that with movies and music. Yes. Yeah. You know? I I pay a small subscription fee to be able to access any song or movie in the world at any time from anywhere. Yeah, which is nice. Like, don't get me wrong. I I do love streaming. 
especially because I don't have anywhere in my house to keep DVDs yeah. and stuff like that. Who like, has it's physical just, media anymore? Right. Well, and I mean, let's be honest too, with how expensive it is to, you know, be alive in general, yeah. downsizing your living space and not having as much stuff in it because it's smaller makes sense. And therefore streaming is kind of a nice option. But also like it it sucks because there's no way that you can we can't keep it up. You it's know? not sustainable, you're saying? Exactly. Right. If everybody has their hand out for a monthly subscription, not everybody's going to get it. Come right. on. Right. Right. Honestly, I'm just saying LimeWire is probably going to make a comeback pretty <laughs> quick here. LimeWire, Kazaa. Yeah. Napster. Kevin, the most interesting man in the world, my buddy from Manhattan, mm-hmm. said, Mike, the Girl Scouts here are so smart. <laughs> In a follow-up to our Girl Scout cookies conversation uh-huh. last week, uh, he said they set up in front of dispensaries. You know, I heard about them doing that in California, too. <laughs> and also, they are so smart. <laughs> and know, at that point, I feel like the dispensary should be paying them to set up outside there. Right. Because realistically, if I'm looking at two dispensaries and one has Girl Scouts in front of it, that's a one-stop mm-hmm. shop, dude. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I mean, it's a well-known fact yeah. that you get the munchies. Yeah. <laughs> well, what little business lady? Just look at Scooby and Shaggy. Yeah. What were in, the, in those Scooby snacks? So, <laughs> There's a reason Shaggy was eating them, too. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's funny. And he also gave me a, li- a comparative list. Uh, I guess Girl Scout cookies in Idaho are six bucks a box. There's seven in New York. Oh, that sucks. We, as we discussed last week, we're a little Brownie Baker's territory. Uh-huh. He's ABC Baker's. Right. They have lemonades. We have lemon ups. Oh, okay. Which are slightly different. And they also have gluten-free chocolate chip cookies. Oh. Which I don't think little Brownie Baker's territories have. You'd think that that'd be in both of the bakeries because there are gluten-free people everywhere. Well, yeah. Like we talked about last week. It's a yeah. global marketplace. They ought to... Uh, standardize it somehow. Right. You know? Do you think Kevin would be willing to do a Girl Scout cookie exchange, by the way? Hey, let us know, Kev. If there's anything that we have that you do, you know, if you want to compare Samoas and Caramel Delights, let us know. We'll send you ours if you send us yours. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be um, Inuit brothers. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> That's funny. Also a quick follow-up just in general, Ruby, Frankie, and Jody Hildebrandt sentenced. Ooh. For child abuse. Yeah. They'll receive four to 30 years, which sounds like, it's like, okay, about the time it takes to get through college or three decades. That sounds like a super wide window. What's it going to be based on? Good behavior? I have to assume that's going to be a factor. I also kind of wonder if they are, like, if some of the sentencing has to do with, like, um, each of the kids being counted as a separate case. Right. You know? These, in case you're wondering, these are the Utah mommy bloggers. Um, who basically abuse their kids for fake internet points. Yeah. Well, and the, took away their basic needs as punishment, like food and a place to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, and honestly, like I'm kind of starting to wonder if the dad's going to get any charges too. Is he complicit? I mean, here's the thing. He definitely knew about his kid not having a room because at that time he and Ruby were not separated. So I would assume that he would... He would have known at least that was happening. Mm, and if he allowed if he allowed that to happen and didn't blink an eye and didn't think it was wrong, what else did he allow? Exactly. You know? Two more follow-ups. Remember last week when we were talking about kids these days right. and how they have 90s parties and how they get some things kind of wrong? Right. I thought of a really good example this week uh, for my generation. Oh, really? Do you remember Frankie Goes to Hollywood Relax? Nope. Relax. Don't do it. Oh. When you want to do it. Oh, yeah. Of relax. course. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry. I <laughs> thought <laughs> when you said Frankie Goes to Hollywood, it was a movie. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, the big shirt back in my day was just a white shirt with right. black lettering that said, Frankie Say Relax. Yes. I've seen that. Now, Frank, it there's some disagreement on whether or not a band name is a singular or plural noun. Right, that's fair. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, So you could, it it was grammatically correct to say Frankie say relax because Mm -hmm. Frankie is a group of people. Right. Frankie referring to Frankie Goes to Hollywood, a group, a collective, Mm -hmm. those people say Mm -hmm. relax. 
Right. And then everybody forgot about them for 20, 30 years. Uh Uh-huh. And then in the early 2000s, there were these shirts that came back that said, Frankie says relax. Right. Cringe city. Uh Okay, but something tells me. (laughs) That's an example of the kids getting it wrong. Or is it an example of people trying to use licensed material without having the license? Could also be it. I'm going to say both. Yeah. Primarily the first one. Now, personally, I think as someone with an English degree, I'm going to go ahead and flex that a (laughs) little. Do it. Um, You deserve it. I feel like it should be based on whether or not the um, band name is a plur- is a plural or singular noun. So, for example, uh, My Chemical Romance says because it's speaking of a singular romance. That's what. That's how I feel too. Now, if we had something like the Lumineers, the Lumineers say "relax." That's how I would do it. There you go. Mm-hmm. If the band name is plural, yeah. Then you can, exactly. Yeah, I I think that makes the most logical sense to me. Mm -hmm. Final follow-up. Wow, we're blazing through these. Mm -hmm. Dane says, Dane Dingman, Darkwing Design. Okay. And also a reference to the Jane's Addiction song, Jane Says. Have I done that bit before? Anyway. I don't think so. Dane, who listens to us, watches us on YouTube, says, um, dude, Shaq's shoe shoe size. Who? I knew I wouldn't be able to say it. (laughs) Does he wear them on the seashore? He does. (laughs) Where he sells, also sells seashells Ooh, that was tough wasn't it so tough (laughs) (laughs) shack's shoe size when he's selling seashells by the seashore is 20 okay he wears a 22 Uh uh-huh so i looked into this apparently he's a size 20 but he wears size 22 Uh uh-huh and i guess the reason for that is Mm-hmm. To your point last episode, where it must mm-hmm. have been hard for his mom to keep up. That's exactly right. the reason. So his shoes were always tight. Oh. So he likes a little wiggle room. Oh, gotcha. Like he's, shoes. it's sort of um, that pendulum effect again. Yeah. You know, he was like, they were too tight. Now they're going to be just a little too big. Yeah. So thanks for <laughs> that, Dane. And we're going to talk about his wife in a little bit. I love how he's like, my shoes are already massive. But let's just make them a little bigger. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, if it's if it's close to impossible to get, right? Why not size forty? Yeah, honestly, <laughs> Knock yourself out. <laughs> I kind of wonder. A giant man. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now it makes me wonder though if maybe he decided to size up so that he could share shoes with Bigfoot. <laughs> maybe Bigfoot is like a size and a half bigger. And so he was like, hey, man, hear me out. I'm going to get my shoes in a 22 so you and I can share, okay? Maybe. So, yeah. So that way, if if Bigfoot ever needs some formal shoes for, like, his cousin's wedding, then he can just call up Shaq and be like, hey, man, you got some brown loafers? On the real tip, though, do you believe in Bigfoot? Uh, no, not really. Yeah, maybe. I don't I'm, know. I'm not sure I do. Yeah. I mean, they had a whole show finding Bigfoot where they never mm-hmm. found Bigfoot. I don't know how many seasons that went on right. for. I I mean, we are discovering new species of, an- of animals every day. Yeah. But they're usually either ocean animals or like this big. <laughs> uh, yeah, some frogs on a mountaintop in, I don't know, Nepal somewhere we yeah. just discovered. Right. They've been... Have you seen those ones that look just like Kermit the Frog? No. Those are a new, they they were newly found and they look just like Kermit. Sweet. Yeah, they're freaky looking. They're so cool. Do they say, hi ho, Kermit the Frog here? <laughs> no, but they do play banjos and sing about rainbows. Oh. Yeah. Why are there so many <laughs> songs about rainbows? That's such a cute song. <laughs> Although that second verse of the, have you been half asleep and have you heard vo- voices? I hear them calling my name. Mm. Kind of super spooky. Yeah, and that's before legal dispensaries, so that was Jim Henson smoking. Right. They say that most Bigfoot sightings are actually bears just walking on their hind legs. Oh, yeah, I could see that. Or bear. Have you ever seen a bear with mange? Oh, yeah, they're freaky because they get all bald and scabby. That's some nightmare fuel right there. (laughs) Oh, they're terrifying. I wonder what shoe size bears wear, though. Ooh, you know what? That's Well, they'd have to go wide. (laughs) I know that they would, much. They would. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. I guess it depends on the bear. <laughs> you know, the other day I saw a bear, uh-huh. a great big bear that had no hair. The <laughs> did, other day. Did he have mange? I saw a bear. <laughs> a great big bear. Who had no You know, when I was- Campfire? A- anybody? Oh, yeah. No? I, I remember that song from Girls Camp. Okay. And every time I sang it, I imagined a hair that was just bald right on top. 
Oh. Like he literally had no hair right here. Like male pattern bear baldness. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The rest of him was fine. But just his, just the top of his head didn't okay. have any hair. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Which, I mean, realistically, that's not what the song is. Here's the thing. That might be what the song writer was kind of thinking. But what the song is describing is a bear with no hair, which would mean no hair anyway. All over, yeah. Yeah. Not even hair down there. Oh, no. Does he dare? <laughs> oh, I bet he gets cold. <laughs> Why are we like this? <laughs> We've just learned to accept it. Yeah. I hope you do too. <laughs> Let's start with two things about Rexburg. Ooh, speaking of Rexburg, shout out to my friend Rose. She lives in Rexburg. All right. What's up, Rose? Thanks yeah. for your comments and love on Facebook. And uh, there's a wand shop there now. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. Now, maybe I'm severely underestimating the Harry Potter fandom in East Idaho. Sure. But I would think that that would only do well, like, you know, at Universal Studios. Where did, didn't... Yes, we did look at that. One of your nieces or nephews get a Both custom, of them did. Okay, both. <laughs> of course they did. And a butter beer. Uh-huh. One frozen, one not. I mean, yep. that was a great... That was... That was really fun. That was our first episode. Not as good as Disneyland, but still very fun. Agreed. But um, I guess, yeah, at this shop, same thing. You can customize yeah. your own wand. Here's the thing. Realistically, you have a never-ending pool of college students Going in and out. That's you know? true. Not only that, but I mean, that's kind of a great place for a first date. Oh, yeah. You know, Spend a little time a customizing your wand. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, thankfully, Mormonism doesn't usually like shit on Harry Potter and be like, you can't read it because it's witchcraft. Right. My, I know my conservative Baptist group right. was, was against it. Yes. For those reasons. Yeah. So I think they'll do okay. Um, I know that there are probably some slightly more diehard Mormons who might not be into that, but realistically, most of them, like, what else are they going to do? Right. So, I mean, new BYU-Idaho pickup line, hey, you want to come wax my wand? <laughs> funny. <laughs> funny. Well, and I think the ones are only like 20 bucks each, right? Or start at 20 bucks? I think something reasonable like yeah. that. Yeah. And I mean, realistically, a nice date for $40 where you guys go in, make wands together, and like get to chit-chat and create, like, that sounds nice. You know, I honestly, I would go there. That sounds fun. Yeah. 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 It's called the Wonderful Workshop, 18 East Main Street. I'd probably just be pointing wands down at me and saying, when Guardian Leviosa. <laughs> Leviosa. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you're looking for a magical evening. <laughs> and then we'll go soaking. Have, <laughs> have we, and should we, talk about those mythical Mormon sex acts? We have not. That's so many people on this show. We haven't yet? <laughs> I don't know if we should, but why don't we just give it a little go? G- just a quick happens? overview before we Maybe get we'll to- Maybe we'll just do the tip? <laughs> just the tip <laughs> yeah. of the wand. Yeah. Just for a minute. Yeah. Just to see how it feels. Right. All right. The very first mythical- Let's back it all the way up. Okay. So you're saying before, mythical here. Because I really don't believe they're true. Okay. Interesting. Let, let's back this all the way up. Have you ever been a 12-year-old boy in a gross-out contest with other 12-year-old boys, Carly? No, I have not. Because I have. <laughs> and I'm sure this has been going on since the dawn of time, by the way. Right. This is not a new thing. First, there was, ah, oh, hi, nice to meet you. And then there was testing the waters. Right. And then there was full-on just one-upmanship right. of the grossness. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there was that. And then there was that Oprah episode about the rainbow parties. Remember that? <sighs> yeah. The rainbow parties were based on the premise that teen kids were getting together and girls would put on different shades of lipstick and apply the lipstick to, Yikes. I'm sh- I'm sh- I, don't, I don't know if they spun the bottle or there was a raffle or how they determined, yeah. or maybe all the boys got it. And as bad as that is. Do you remember hearing about those jelly bracelets and how each color meant something different? Oh, like yeah. you were willing to do some, either you were willing to do it or you did do it. Depends on which myth you heard. And, and and the same thing was said with scarves. If you tossed your scarf over the left shoulder, it meant one thing. Over the right shoulder meant another. Uh, what it should mean is you're right or left handed, realistically. <laughs> Earring placement. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it really with those rubber ba- bracelets, all it meant was that I was... Shopping at Hot Topic, and they matched my outfit. (laughs) Right. So I don't believe rainbow parties actually ever happened. 
I don't think everything in the devil's dictionary has actually been done. Right. I mean, maybe in the history of humankind. I mean, maybe something here maybe. and there, but. Yeah. But I also don't believe that BYU Idaho or BYU students, because the rumor was for the longest time. Right. And by the way, no disrespect to our LDS friends or your faith, uh, but we do talk about what everybody knows right. on, on this show. If you want to know about Idaho Falls, this is common knowledge among LDS and non-LDS people. Right. Yeah. I, I learned about this when I was LDS. The, the, you and, know? and again, I don't believe any of them are true. Right. So chronologically, let's just get through these. The rumor was BYU students sometimes let boys in the back door to preserve <laughs> their technical virginity. Oh, with a good old fashioned poop hole loophole. Yes. And oh my gosh. <laughs> that that song by um, Garfunkel and Oates. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> Two lady comedians who are mm -hmm. hilarious, and the name itself is hilarious because it was right. Simon and Garfunkel, Hall and Oates. Uh -huh. So they're basically saying we're the second best in the group <laughs> that got right. together. <laughs> right. Well, and and also, um, I would say that that's not exclusive to Mormonism. I'd say that that's any religion that values virginity. Yes. You know that. Rumor at least has happened. So chronologically, that's the very first one I uh -huh. heard about in like high school. And then I heard about soaking. And we'll, we'll define these all in just a yeah, minute. Yeah, don't worry. <laughs> and then I heard about gazing parties. Uh-huh. In fact, let's define that one. Gazing parties is basically a live in-person version of the British television show Naked Attraction available on Max. Which I love so much. You know, just the other day I was watching that in, in my living room and I kind of looked over and realized it was reflecting in the window <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, like if anyone has walked by <laughs> my house, they're going to think that I'm such a creep. <laughs> <laughs> what is she doing? What is she watching? But also I love how incredibly British they are about it. Mm, yes. You know, like, like this guy will walk up to this chick in a pod and she'd be like, oh, I'm not really sure about her nipples. You know? right. and, and the host is like, and, and what do you think of that minge? <laughs> right. She's very direct. I know. I love it. It's so funny. But um, but yeah, where a, a group of, I would say, two or more people get together, and I suppose uh -huh. there has to be an even number of girls and an even number of guys. Depends if on I were how a, hot the guy or the girl is. If I were a logistics planner, I would <laughs> think so. Otherwise, it's just, what, art class? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Draw me like one of your French girls. Yeah. But uh, they just stand in a room, mm -hmm. disrobe, and check each other's junk out. Yeah. So back to soaking. I heard about soaking. It's basically where you... You insert, but you don't move. Right. Yep. Here's something you won't get on a special you know? news report. Right. Except on this show. All right. So after soaking, here's the new one that I've heard about. Mm -hmm. So we've covered them all chronologically, except for this new one I've heard about. Right. That, the one that uh, I was telling you about? That uh, Well, and I've heard about it for a couple of years now. Uh-huh. Where there are, there's the, uh, what, the soaker. Uh-huh. And I suppose the soaky. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would define it as. <laughs> and then they bring on a third person, a third party. Uh-huh. Who um, jumps on the bed. Yes. <laughs> because then the soaker isn't committing the sin and the soaky isn't committing the sin. They just happen to be in a position where, because of tremors, it feels like... Here's my which, real question. Yeah. You think you're fooling God? Yeah, With exactly. any of this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? That's like, the silliest that point, part of it. At that point, just do it, dude. Anyway, the only question I have left is you got a soaker and a soaky. What's the jumper called? Well, I think they're called the jumper, but the entirety of the act is called jump humping. Oh, my God. Okay, now I'm going to make a quick argument. <laughs> I know that you're saying that you don't think that these have happened. Uh-huh. I slightly disagree. I think that they were totally made up at one point, and someone was coming up with theor theoretical ways to trick God into thinking that they were still a virgin. Sure. Okay. And having been an LDS youth who would have been approximately college-aged or about to go into college mm -hmm. at the time, uh, I could see someone... I, I had plenty of peers back then that I interacted with regularly, and I can think of several of them who would have heard this and been like, oh, that's the secret. 
We still have that second Rexburg thing to get to. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I forgot about that entirely. Man, and there's someone listening who's like, when are they going to talk about the other thing? The other thing is crispy cones. We got to go there. Oh, tell me about crispy. I haven't heard about this. It's soft serve ice cream in a cone. Okay. The cone is where the magic is. It's, okay. It's thicker dough uh-huh. that's basically over grilled over a rotisserie. And then sprinkled with sugar. So these guys were just on Shark Tank last Friday night with Barbara Corcoran. Oh, really? Yeah, who's doing the deal with them. Oh, crazy. They're expanding. They already have stores in Rexburg, Logan, Provo, Chandler, Arizona, Tempe, Arizona, and Orlando, Florida. Oh, so, th- and so, they've got 20 more stores coming. So yeah, we got to give them a try. Yeah. Go up to like- Rexburg, get some um, curry pizza. Oh, I do love me some curry pizza. A crispy cone for dessert. Mm. You know, do a little soaking <laughs> in a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, that crispy cone sounds so good. It's, it almost, it's almost like getting to go to one of the first McDonald's. Right. You know? Right. Get like, in, this could be your chance. Get in on this on the ground floor. <laughs> uh, you want Make to an do? investment in your sugary carbs. <laughs> yeah. You know what? Do you want to do a little Rexburg trip this upcoming weekend? Because that, sounds, that sounds really nice. Sounds fantastic. Well, yeah, we'll totally do curry pizza and stuff. Oh, and maybe go to Denny's since the Chubbuck Denny's closed too. Right. So now Denny's is closed in Idaho Falls. Mm-hmm. And Chubbuck. Yeah. The only Denny's is in Rexburg. Wild to me, by the way. So we've talked about everything except for Idaho Falls. So let's get to Idaho Falls. Yes. One thing a family member of yours told me last Sunday night at dinner. <gasps> yes. Was about citizenportal.ai. Mm-hmm. It's a brand new thing from the co-founder of Microsoft, Paul Allen. Whoa. Okay. And I guess it's it uses AI to somehow obtain and sort Um, videos of every single city council meeting in your state. And you can get get that for free or for a subscription. Another subscription. Right. Go nationwide. But if you are so civically minded Mm -hmm. that you want to watch every city council meeting Mm -hmm. and the way your, the the way your relative framed it to me was so you can see what idiots they are. Sorry, Mm -hmm. Idaho Falls city council, just reporting what was said. Right. Um, I personally don't have the time, the wherewithal, the desire. I mean, if I were to if I were to watch every city council meeting, I might as well join the city council. Yeah, at that point. You know, also not going to happen. Yeah. But <laughs> but uh, if you're into that sort of thing, and mm-hmm. I know, I imagine most people listen to us for the opposite, right, of a city council meeting. Yeah, I think so. But I bet we have some crossover, and so if you're into that sort of thing. Citizenportal.ai, really easy to sign up. Yeah. To be fair, I think that our folks are here for less info, more attainment. Yes. <laughs> and again, when you sign up, you sign up for the whole state. So you can get all the Boise oh, cool. stuff and or Lewiston stuff, Coeur d'Alene, whatever you're into. Oh, nice. Nice. That's smart. That's a good way to do it. You know, and that's the thing. I actually really, I find uh, politics and like, you know, the philosophy, the philosophy around it pretty fascinating overall. But realistically, like, Life is hard right now. <laughs> right. I can't invest any more emotional energy into politics because it's our, all of my emotional energy is being used on things to keep me alive and to like help people at my job. Like it's so focused that I can't expand outside of this very, very small epicenter. Well, and I never want to become one of those dudes. And I've, you know, when you get to about my age, some of your friends decide to go this route. Right. That they just get so upset all the time. They're always so angry. Mm-hmm. And and they want to shake me and say, How come you're not? Right. Because because I don't I don't I'm not gonna dwell on that. Um well then you then then your eyes are closed. Yeah, are they? It's I'm, not about your eyes being being closed. It's about the fact that you have so much more to deal with. I'm interested in other stuff. Yeah. You know, there's that, what's the serenity prayer? Grant God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Right, right. And politics is one of those things. Mm-hmm. The courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference is mm-hmm. the rest of that. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do think it's important to be involved in your local and, you know, countrywide politics when you can. Sure. And also, at the end of the day, if you're sacrificing your own mental or physical health to do so... 
don't do it, dude. Very well said. Thank you, Carl. Yeah. Yeah. Old men that get angry on the sidelines, but still do nothing. I just, I, I feel bad for them. Well, and, and to be fair, there's not a lot they can do. And they, you know, they say the, the world's going to a hell in a handbasket. Mm-hmm. The thing is, the world's always been going to hell in a handbasket. Right. We always pendulum back and forth. Exactly. You know? So I, I'm not convinced. Yeah. It's not going down. It's just going this way and then that way and then that way again. We swing yeah. from conservative to liberal mm-hmm. to the point earlier about Meredith Brooks bitch versus right. Beyonce <laughs> Texas Hold'em. Honestly, maybe those guys should have like a daughter named Helena. <laughs> then they- <laughs> Middle name handbasket. <laughs> well, I was thinking then they could put her in a handbasket and do one of those like uh, photo shoots, like that one photographer. That and always- get us. Yes. Yeah. With the babies and the vegetables and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, I feel like that would be a, a nice way for them to sort of yeah. reframe Hell in a Handbasket for them. Perfection. Yeah. Yeah, it's Love cute. It. Speaking of AI, did you hear last week that Google AI was too woke, I guess, meaning that you would ask there, and I forget the name of the app, uh-huh. but you would ask the app to, and I don't know where people are finding these really cool apps where you uh-huh. describe what you want to see and then it shows you the picture. Oh, like have you seen the I've horse girl with one? a few of them. No, uh-uh. Oh, I, I think it was a TikTok or something that I saw, but someone went to one of those apps and they did one. They were like, uh, show me a picture of a horse girl, you know, and it was like a girl in her room with lots of horse dolls and stuff. And then they were like, okay, add more horses and make her even happier. And they kept doing that and doing that and doing that until it was this like cosmic wormhole of horses. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that with show me a Utah family. Yes. Blonde haired, blue eyes. I saw that one too. Husband, wife, two kids. Uh-huh. And then they said, make it bigger, more smiling. Yeah. And by the end, there were like 200 people. Right. Giant mountains in the background. <laughs> yeah. All wearing white shirts and and. And khakis. Light brown khakis. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I remember that one. So I guess people were typing in, you know, paint me a, show me a drawing of the founding fathers. But they were like, um, there were women and uh-huh. there were minorities oh. in in the picture. Oh, interesting. So it was, it's so now, you know, honestly, America, and I, there was a comedian that did a bit on this and I don't remember who, but America is the only diverse country. Watch the Olympics. When the Chinese team comes on to play, who do you see? Chinese people. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say America's the only one. I There's Canada yeah. and Australia and Britain. And the UK, sure. But, but, um, but it's just so funny actually, because- uh, South Africa, too. They put so much of an emphasis on diversity that mm-hmm. they're no longer being historically accurate. And I get things like Bridgerton okay, wait. and Hamilton- I was going to say, I but, wonder if AI was looking at <laughs> Hamilton, dude. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, so they've actually pulled it. Okay. But I had the same sort of experience playing with the new Microsoft Copilot app. Okay, but really quick, before you go there, yeah. I kind of wonder if Lucy's used that same app to make the sexy Ben Franklin that's now on their boxes for some reason. Okay, so first of all, love Lucy's. <laughs> right. Love the um, fried mutts appetizer, which is basically just a giant breaded block of mozzarella. So good. Melted. I'm, I want some we right now. We have more of that because if we do. We do. Okay, hot. It's in the fridge with the oh, marinara. And you know what? I've got some tomato soup. I'm just saying, let's make a nice little marriage out of that. But Lucy's has a sexy Ben Franklin pizza <laughs> box. First of all, Ben Franklin, I associate more with Philadelphia. Right. But, and, and Lucy's is New York style pizza. Yeah, yeah. But to be fair, Benny Boy did pull plenty of ladies. Yeah, did he? Oh, like he was really well known for cheating on his wife like all the time. It was the electricity, I'm sure. Yeah, it's got to be. They all wanted to get with poor Richard and his almanac. <laughs> wow. It's got to be it. So back to Google AI. And I and I guess somebody, I don't know if they used Google AI for this, but they somebody created a Taylor Swift deep fake porn. And oh yikes! Yeah, like uh, she's pissed. Of uh, obviously, I don't blame her. and of course, like there's going to be all sorts of lawsuits opening up, don't you think? Well, and it just feels like such a violation using someone's trademark li- likeness without their permission, mm-hmm. and especially for purposes like that. But yeah, so I felt like a little bit of a perv, a little bit of a skeeve, and I'll tell you why. I went to this Microsoft Copilot app. Okay. And I said, hey, I described myself. Uh-huh. Show me a six-foot-tall brunette man. 
mm-hmm. standing next to, what are you, 5'5"? Five, five? Yeah. Okay. A 5'5 five, five ginger. And at, in the process of describing you, mm-hmm. I said, I think I said busty. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's not inaccurate. It, there's, there's no elephant in the room. Yeah. <laughs> I literally had to have surgery to correct how busty I was. Right. This is post-surgery, man. You and got, there's still a lot there. You got a reduction. I did. Back problems or what? Yes. Okay. Tons of back problems. Yeah. So, so I described you as busty and they were like, I'm um, sorry, we can't draw that. <laughs> And so I tried to use other language, Mm -hmm. but I was just describing you. And back to woke culture, um, and I don't disagree with everything that's defined as woke, Sure. by the way, but um, when feelings are more important than facts, I was being factual. Right. But co-pilot's feelings got hurt and said, no, you can't describe somebody that way. It's like, did you notice like 10 years ago uh when news organizations stopped identifying the race of accused criminals? Right. And I was like, what are we doing here? We Mm -hmm. need to, it's more important now than ever. I never bought into the, I don't see color thing. No, I You don't see color, you're a liar. Yeah. And now, thank goodness, the pendulum has has swung Mm -hmm. into the realm of reason where, yes, see color Mm -hmm. and respect it. Right. Okay. So- but I want to know, like, is it a hate crime? Right. Well, and realistically, the only time that they need to, or the only time that they really ought to be describing race in that sense, like in a news article for a crime or something like that, is if the uh, suspect is actively being hunted down and you need an accurate and, you know, Excellent clear point. description. Right. What does he look like? Right. Is he black? Is he white? Is he Latino? Exactly. Or if there is a hate crime. Yeah. Right. Yeah, then you describe the person who's being, you know, victimized. Anyway, I got banned from Microsoft Copilot. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like after three attempts, it kicked me out. You know, so I don't know how we're okay, ever okay. Gonna... But to be fair, I kind of get why because <laughs> they're probably just trying to avoid t- lawsuits. Well, right, they're probably like, "This is a skeevy twelve-year-old perv." Right. You know, and uh. I was just trying to be accurate. We're gonna figure this out. There's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. But. <laughs> It sure as hell isn't right now. That sucks. Yeah. You know, that's the tricky thing. And also, like, language is so up for interpretation. You know, you have to either get so specific in your wording that you're using words that no one does, or, (laughs) you know, or you have to assume that the person who you're talking to understands you and your cultural and your cultural background and personality enough that they understand what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. See, this is what happens when we don't have a news heavy week moving. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Not a lot going on. Like liter- literally other than the weather. That's the only thing we haven't really covered news wise. And only talentless hacks talk about the weather, but to or be people fair. who are trying to start a conversation. Right. But to be fair also, uh, this last weekend was super nice. It was super nice. <laughs> was it 52 on Sunday? Yeah. Amazing. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. Yeah. And where are we? Is this fool's spring? I have to believe it is. I have to believe we have at least one more snowstorm coming. I don't know. It feels so It feels so early spring. I'm kind of expecting it to stay. It does. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. Want to give a shout out to somebody who deserves it. One Chad Summer. You may know him from TikTok as the crazy eye guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know him. Okay. If you don't, watch this ad real quick that I did with him about four or five years ago. I just want to sell my home. I can help with that. You can? Sure. Mike helps Idaho buy, sell homes. Let's talk about what your home's worth and how we can sell it for the most amount of money, the fastest, and with the least amount of effort. That sounds great. Here, hold this. Okay. Wow, it's that easy. Mike helps Idaho. Service so good, you won't believe your eyes. So you see he's got a very specific talent. Right. He can make his eyes bug out of his head. I just want to know what happened the very first time he did that. Like, was he like... How did he discover that talent? Was he like a year and a half and like not even talking yet? (laughs) And like, you know, just a few words here and there. And then Uh, he looked at his mom one day and his eyes were like that. And she like rushed him to the hospital. Or or was he like a teenager (laughs) making funny faces in the mirror like you do? Oh, he had to have found that out sooner. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah. And he told me, because my first question was, does that hurt? (laughs) Because it kind of looks like it should. He's like, I can't do it all day, but no, it doesn't hurt. Okay. I think I think there might be 
some slight discomfort there, but I don't, but not yeah. a lot. Obviously, he does it, and he does a great job, of course, with reaction videos. Yeah, he's one of the only reaction mm-hmm. video uh, social TikTokers media that people watch. that I'll watch yeah. because you know, well, yeah, because they feel a little cheap. And well, and it's but but he doesn't just sit there and nod. He makes his eyes bug out at the pivotal moment in the TikTok. Right, right. And it's hilarious. I imagine people come up to him all the time and say, "Do the thing." Do oh, the they've thing. got to. You're the guy. Do the thing. They've got to. Right. So he started a new podcast. He had an issue with uh, substance abuse, mm-hmm. and uh, it, and I've known him for the last four or five years. And uh, you know, we occasionally do the buddy check in thing. Oh, nice. And. Aww. um and yeah, I, I remember hearing his story of, you know, his decision to get sober. Well, now he's started a podcast about it. It's called Rock Bottoms Up. Oh, funny. So a portmanteau of the two expressions, rock bottom and bottoms up. Uh-huh. And maybe like a positive spin on it because it's going up. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Anyway, the byline is stories of recovery, real, raw, ridiculous, And it's a new podcast launching uh, next week, March 4th. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Friend him now on Facebook, Chad Sommer, Mm S-O-M-M-E-R. Like your buddy Ari Aster's Midsummer. Oh, I love Midsummer. It's so good. (laughs) Chad Sommer, the crazy eye guy. Mm -hmm. Follow him somewhere, and I'm sure you'll see his podcast. Well, and doesn't he have like 2 million followers on TikTok? Yeah, he's kind of a big deal. Yeah, which is amazing because here's this guy who lives in our same community with us who has such a huge reach online. Honestly, I'm kind of excited. I'm excited to see where this podcast goes because, you know, here's another local podcast from here alongside us. And of course, She's Missing that we talked about on a previous episode. She's Missing, Jeff and Greg. Oh, yeah. Jeff and Greg are here, too. Who, who I believe had Chad Summer on last Friday night. Oh, cool. I love that. They they do their podcast, I think, at 8 o'clock on Friday nights. Uh-huh. He must be doing a circuit. Ours launches around 1230 Monday mornings, Mountain Time. Right. Yeah, maybe, yeah, he might be doing a circuit. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Chad Summer, the crazy eye guy. Yeah. Stories of recovery, real, raw, ridiculous, rock bottoms up. You are IFAF this week. Chris Pie 5, whoosh, 21 finger gun salute. Pew, pew. And chef's kiss. To you. To you, buddy. As the Idaho Falls Symphony called it, because we made their Ermac Red Dress concert last week, mm-hmm. IFAF. They called it the coveted chef's kiss. Ooh, maybe, they're so fancy. Maybe we need to add that. <laughs> so this episode has had so much sex, drugs, and rock and roll in it. <laughs> it's almost over. We can't let it go by without making you aware of uh, soon to be one of our favorite events, I think. I'm so excited. Now, I've never gotten to go, but I think you've gone once, right? I think I have, yeah. Okay. This is the Furball, the Snake River Animal Shelter Furball, and we're Uh so excited for it. Yeah, it's this big fundraising event that they do every year. Um, I've heard great things about it, and we actually got invited to go this year, and I'm so stoked. Thanks, Lane and Whitney. Virgin Riverland and Cattle Company, Mm -hmm. you've heard us talk about they do that thing at Idaho Falls Spud Kings hockey games, Uh where if somebody gets a hat trick, they donate $500 to the animal shelter. Right. Well, they also got a table at the Furball and Uh invited us. I don't know why. I love that so much. So I was so excited. <laughs> we took them to the Ermac Red Dress concert. They had a good time. We did. I think yeah. they did. Yeah. So uh, we're going to be there. The theme is what? Oh, Tales from Space, which I feel like there's been a lot of space themed stuff lately. T A I L S. Oh, yeah. Tales. Of from course, because they wag. Super cute. So cute, right? Oh, and mad props to Michelle Dingman. Dane's wife. Oh, She's yes. the executive director at the Snake River Animal Shelter. Yeah. Do you know they just won? I guess there was a national contest among animal shelters for adoptions. Uh-huh. They had this home for the hol- or home for holidays. Oh, cute. program like a three month adoption drive. Oh wow! Last year, mm-hmm. well, they did so well. Mm-hmm. That they won twenty five thousand dollars for the shelter. Oh, that's awesome! Now, first of all, I will say it. it should have been a home for the holidays, but okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but also, I'm so glad because I know that there have been a lot of pets going through their shelter lately, and they probably could really use that money to help kind of expand their facilities a little. I had the fortunate experience of adopting a cat from mm-hmm. the Snake River Animal Shelter, and the unfortunate experience of surrendering a cat. On behalf oh. of a client. Oh, that's sad though still. To, to the Snake River Animal Shelter. And and I learned a very important lesson. You know how when they say feral cats? Right. That that doesn't mean, you know, crazy and um, 
Right. And Clawy all the time. Sometimes mm-hmm. it means they don't want a home. Right. Right. I get that. They they don't want to be kept inside. Yeah. You can you, you, you really can take the cat to... out the barn, but mm-hmm. you can't take the barn out the cat. Yeah. And I learned that the hard, sad way. Yeah. You really do have to catch them when they're pretty young and, you know, get them used to being around people and stuff. But thank goodness um, for the Snake River Animal Shelter. Yeah. Yeah. For all those critters that need somewhere to go. It's Saturday, March 9th. Tickets are a hundred bucks a piece, which uh-huh. I know is spendy, but you know, that's a registered mm-hmm. 501c3 charity and a tax deductible uh, charitable contribution. Uh-huh. Yeah, there is that. And, and <laughs> it's at the cost. Mountain America Center, by the way. Yes. Yeah. And I have to assume that some of your ticket costs also just go straight to the animal shelter. I would imagine. Which is awesome. Mm-hmm. You know, plus, I mean, realistically, how often do we get a dress up around here? You know, having you, a nice fun event to get all fancy at. As long as you can go out, dress up and go out. Yeah. That's all I want. You're happy. Yeah. That's what makes you happy. That's what fills you up, fills your cup. It is. I love to see and be seen. I love it. Yeah. And that's the thing. I don't even have to talk to other people you there. You love to see NBC? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have to talk to other people there, but I I just want people to know that I look fabulous. That's all. <laughs> well, and you do. You rock it consistently every time. You know, and okay. So like with the red dress event, we talked about this a little. I almost went with a, a different dress that would have been a little bit more toned down, not quite as fun and fancy. A little more modest is hottest. Right. And then I was just like, you know what, man? No. No. Why would I go out and not give it my all? I think you said last episode, we're never going to the Met Gala. Right. So we might as well, you know, yeah, you find your special moments when you find them. Exactly. And this is going to be one of them. If you just uh, search for the fur ball on Facebook or go to the Snake River Animal Shelter website, Mm -hmm. you'll get all the details. I'm so excited. You know, I've actually never had to adopt a pet from a shelter because the universe (laughs) has just sort of distributed them to me. (laughs) They come to you. Yeah. 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 Like currently I have three pets. Um, I've got, well, unless... You're my HOA that I only have two. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, I've got two cats and I've got a chihuahua. Um, but my cat, Leo, we just found in the Walmart parking lot. Best thing I've ever gotten from Walmart, by the way. He's such a love. Oh, he's the, he's he is the pure love. He's the epitome of the perfect cat. Mm. He's just a sweet baby. He sleeps in my arms like a little teddy bear every night. And he's chunky and his little butt jiggles when he moves. Oh, I love him so much. <laughs> Um, and then there's Coco, of course, who, um, she was a kitten of one of my mom's friend's cats who was going to be a barn cat otherwise. So my mom was kind of helping to like, you know, home the kittens before they had to just live outside their whole lives. And I ended up getting her kind of late because my husband at the time, my now exakin, uh, was sort of fighting it. Uh-huh. And he was like, we don't need another pet. And I was like, <laughs> mm, but she needs us. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the only pet out of all of them that I paid for was Rango. But he also was kind of a not wanted pet and like wouldn't have gone to a good home without me. I can't imagine why. <laughs> oh, shush. He was a puppy at the time. So he was a lot. He was different. You and know, you, you met if you haven't met him before, you met him last episode. Right. And you said his full name was Rango Mariachi <laughs> Venus Penis. Well, and that's mostly a joke. His I mean, his middle name is Mariachi. So it's it's supposed to be Rango Mariachi Morgan. You but know, then I was throwing extra stuff in to make it fun. <laughs> you know how some people have uh, n- their nickname in quotes yes. between their first name and their last name? Yes. Uh huh. I was pretty proud of the nickname I came up with, Rango, because you called him Bagango. Yes. And I came up with Bagangsta. Yeah, which is a really good nickname. Because he is a little bit hood, let's he face is. it. He is. So he totally I, is. I think it ought to be Rango, uh-huh. in quotes, Bagangsta, uh-huh. Mariachi <laughs> Venus Penis. I love that. Can we add one more word to his name? <laughs> let's do it. Okay. You know what? Let's just make it one of those like ridiculously long names. Yeah, we'll keep you going. Know? Yeah, I love it. Well, Coco's name is what? Uh, Co- well, okay. Her nickname is Coquita Mi Morcita y Goyal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so show's almost over. Like you said, it's a light news week, which I love. Right. Yeah, it's kind of nice. Because we will, What's I, th- I believe it's called Parkinson's Law. Mm. That's the thing where a given task will take as much time as you have allotted for it. Right, yeah. Which is why sometimes it takes you all Sunday to clean the house, Mm -hmm. but you can write a college paper in a night. Oh, yeah. Oh, I did that plenty of times. You know, Matter of fact, by the end of college, I was actually waiting till the morning of and then waking up at like 3 a.m. Oh, jeez. It was terrifying. (laughs) 
Do you remember? But it the, got done. Yeah. Do you remember the old college trick? Uh, the Red Bull nap. You'd slam a Red Bull, take a nap, and then the caffeine would start slowly kicking in and wake you back up. Oh no, I never did that. Yeah? But to be fair, I'm pretty sensitive to caffeine, okay. so especially in college, I really didn't consume very much. You know, like I'd have a tea here and there, and that's about it. Um, but yeah, like I never really did that much for energy drinks until I started working retail. Then all of a sudden they were my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, but I don't know what it is about caffeine. It doesn't really get to me on an empty stomach. It'll sometimes give me the shakes. Right. But, um, I literally four nights ago, mm -hmm. I had a Red Bull and then a nap. Oh yeah. And you like slept like a baby. <laughs> I did. You know, I was conked. I'm just going to throw this out there. There are lots of people with ADHD who report having excellent caffeine naps. I I know that I've been told I should try Adderall. I, well, I, I just, just, I don't want to. No, no, it's I, legal meth. And here's the thing. I don't necessarily think that you need Adderall because the thing is, you've gone this long. Yeah. And clearly you've made it work for you. But I do kind of wonder if you've got a little ADHD. I do consider it a personality flaw that I'm either manic uh -huh. or asleep. Yes. I'm either full force mm -hmm. or... Right, right. <laughs> you know, and that's coming from me as someone with ADHD. Yeah. I see some traits in you and I'm kind of like, mm, my doctor was telling me that those are symptoms. I kind of wonder. Wouldn't it be great if everybody in your life got one free pass? Oh, and they had to begin the sentence with, you know what your problem is? Oh, okay. Because we're all so good at kind of observing other people and going, hmm, I think I see what's going on there. Uh-huh. And we're also, I'm great at giving advice. Oh, yeah. But I don't know what advice I should be giving to myself right now. No, no. <laughs> it's so it's so easy to watch your friend in this situation and know exactly what they should do. You know, and even help them to execute that plan. But the second you're in it, you're like, well, I don't know what I should do. This is so, so crazy. I can't even imagine what the option is. Like, what the, what's the solution? Right. You know, and it's like, dude, you're sa like your friend was you, in the exact so same close. situation last month. <laughs> you, you, the expression, you can't see the forest for the trees. Cause right. Because you, you're in it, man. Mm -hmm. And when somebody has a perspective from 20,000 feet, sometimes it can be valuable. It totally can. I completely agree. That's our show. Real <laughs> estate season is coming. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you need to sell your home, contact us us mm -hmm. at ifafpod.com. We'd love to help. Brokerage information on our Facebook page. Have a great week. See you next week. Toodaloo.